Well, we're in the book of Colossians on Sunday night, so if you have your Bibles, uh, please turn there. Colossians chapter 4. I want to begin reading with verse 10. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, salute you, and Marcus' sister's son to Barnabas, checking who be received commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are, are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. For I bear him record that hath a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them that are in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Memphis and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it to be read also in the church of Laodiceans, that you have likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds, grace be unto you, amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, how thankful and grateful we truly are for this opportunity to be in your house again tonight. My prayer is that we've come for no other purpose but to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help us to get our eyes up off the things of this world and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, oh, uh, the grace of our Lord and Savior will just be so wonderful and grateful to us. Father, I pray that if there's one here tonight that never accepted you as a personal Savior, that tonight would be the night that they would do that. For those of us who are Christians, Lord, our prayer is that you'll come quickly. You've asked us to do that. And so we pray that you'll come May not be today, may not be tomorrow, may not be next week, may not be in our lifetime, but we know that you're coming. And my prayer is this, that each and every person that's here tonight would be ready if you came within the next 10, 15 minutes. Lord, I thank you for these verses of Scripture, and I pray that you'll speak to, to the people through the words that we have to say tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now this, the, these verses that I've read to you, all eight verses, I'm going to preach about three sermons on those. Not all of them tonight, but uh, these are some verses of Scripture. If you're not careful, when you read the Word of God, you come down to the end and you'll just simply, you know, plow right on through that. Well, that's just... Paul saying goodbye to the people and all this. But there's a lot of wonderful things to be said. So the three, the three uh, sermons that I'm going to preach, of course, is the men who stayed, the men who prayed, and the men who strayed. Tonight we're going to look at the men who stayed. Now the Apostle Paul sends greeting to six of his associates here, and uh, three of them were Jews, and Epaphras, Luke, and Demas, who were Gentiles. Paul added special greetings to two churches and a specific word to one of the pastors of those churches. And that's a, that, of course, is a man who prayed. But tonight, we want to look at those who stayed. This group is made up of three Jews and one Gentile. <clears throat> All is characterized by the faithfulness to the Apostle Paul. And these are the men who stayed. 
They stayed with Paul through thick, through thin, through everything. They didn't give up. Aristarchus, he stayed with Paul no matter what. Uh, you know, a ride at Ephesus, he was there. A voyage to Rome, a storm on the way, he was there. And in in uh, Rome, now he did not uh, was not in prison with Rome, but he shared in Paul's co confinement so he could help him in some way. I, I see this as a volunteer prisoner for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's willing to just simply go away. He did not run. When the going got tough, he was there. A lot of Christians, by the way, you know, sunshine, 47 degrees, everything is nice, just right. Oh, well, we'll go to church today. If it warms up a little, then we'll go fishing. But, you know, here's the thing about it. These are men who dedicated themselves to being with Paul and in the ministry of the Lord God, and they did not give up or did not quit. How thankful we are for those kind of people. People who are just simply do what they know that needs to be done. The second person we see then, who did not quit, of course, was John Mark. Now, John Mark was a writer of the second gospel, and he played a very important part in the history of the early church. He was a Jew, a native of Jerusalem. By the way, he, his mother kept a house, uh, an open house for believers in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 12, you can read about that. Where the believers can go, that's another wonderful thing that you can do. Have an open house to where people can come and worship and pray. Uh, he was a cousin of Barnabas, uh, you know, and was led to, led to the Lord Jesus Christ through the ministry of Peter. Now, uh, 1 Peter 5.13 tells us that. Many people think that the Gospel of Mark was just what the things that Peter had seen and done, and he told that to Mark, and Mark wrote it down. But John Mark went with Paul and Barnabas, you remember, on the first missionary journey. But something happened. When the going got tough, he abandoned the preacher and went home. Now, the Word of God doesn't tell us why. It doesn't explain it anyway. You know, some have said he was afraid. Away from home, you know, out there. He was afraid. Maybe some think he resented Paul. Why? Because at that time, Paul had become the leader of the group. Starting out, you'll notice that it's Barnabas and Paul. But it's not long until it's Paul and Barnabas. And some people think that he, uh, you know, he resented Paul taking over the leadership, replacing his relative. Uh, Barnabas. Some people say, well, he just got homesick. <laughs> you know, he was away from home, got homesick, decided. Now later, when Paul and Barnabas wanted to go on the second missionary journey, they had a little squabble about this. Paul, uh, you remember this, Paul refused to take Mark. Uh, a lot of people say Paul was wrong. He was wrong in his assessment or his thinking of Mark, perhaps. But I don't think you can blame Paul for being cautious. When Mark had failed in the past, I feel sure that Paul didn't want him long because he might fail again. But, uh, well, I might go on to say that one of the things you find out about the Apostle Paul, he wasn't running a popularity contest. He wasn't on television preaching, you know, and, and rolling his Bible up. No, I better not say that. <laughs> and doing all kinds of things to get people to follow him. What Paul was interested in was winning lost souls of the Lord Jesus Christ and starting churches wherever he went. That was what Paul was about. He wasn't interested in, I mean, you know, having everybody like him and everything because everybody didn't like him. A lot of people didn't, you know. So, uh, 
Nothing was going to keep get in the way of Paul reaching unbelievers with the gospel. That's too bad, too bad, <laughs> that Mark caused the division between Paul and Barnabas. You remember that uh, Paul went one way, took Silas with him, Barnabas went another way, and took Mark. But on the other hand, you have two sets of missionaries now going out to serve the Lord. But don't forget this. Paul eventually forgave Mark. You have to turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. You find out that he forgives Mark and commands him for the work that he has done. You see. Now, by the grace of Almighty God, Mark was overcome, had overcome his past failures. And here was a man who became a valuable servant to the Lord God. I, he was chosen to write the Gospel of Mark. You know, and by the way, the Gospel of Mark is an encouragement to each and every one. I hope you read it because we're going to look at it in days to come. Yet well, he was chosen to write the Gospel of Mark. And that will encourage you when you read it. Uh, now, I would just say this. I don't know how many of you out there, perhaps none of you, but many Christians have failed somewhere along the line in their attempt to serve the Lord. They started out like a house of fire. You know, ready to go. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'm ready. Ah, but you know what? Somewhere down the line, they say, well, now hold on a minute. It's getting a little tough here. And I'm going to quit. I won't do it. I'm not going to go to church anymore. And so they kind of fall by the wayside. But thank God that Mark gets back in the ministry. And if you're there, if you've given up somewhere along the way, listen to me. Get back in the ministry. Prove yourself unto God. Be faithful unto Him. And oh, He can use you. I don't know, down through the years, I've heard people give testimony of the fact that they were saved when they were a certain age, somewhere back in their teens or what have you. They got away from the Lord, stopped serving Him, stopped going to church, stopped doing all those things. But they didn't quit. They got, back in the, they got back in the work of the Lord and began to serve Him and do His will. One of the saddest things, all that you run into is you go out to visit, and I know you probably run into this, you go out to visit and you talk to people and they say, well, I used to, you know, I used to really serve the Lord. I went to church every Sunday, even went on Sunday night, I was just, you know, but you haven't been for the last 10 years. What happened? Why'd you quit? Well, they give you all kinds of reasons for what happened. I say to you tonight, get back in the ministry. Do the work of the Lord. You know, I, I got a feeling the reason that Mark got back in the work, I don't know this, this is not in the Bible. But you know what uh, Barnabas is called? He's called the encourager. I think Barnabas took his cousin Mark aside and said to him, listen, wake up, everybody. You need to get back into it. And he did. You know, sometimes you need someone to come alongside of you and say, hey, get back in there. Continue to serve the Lord. Do His will. Mark, Mark got back in the, and he served the Lord and we have the, the gospel of Mark. Praise God because he did it. Out of the fourth person, or third person that I mentioned is a man. His name is just simply Justice. Now, how many of you know who Justice is? You know what? <clears throat> we know very little about this man. But he represents, now listen, he represents those who serve God 
but they never said that. They never, you know, you don't see them. Their name's not in print. Uh, you know, they're just always there serving the Lord. These are the kind of people who really keep things moving along. They don't have to be up front. They don't have to be seen. They don't have to, you know, stand out in any way. They just can't simply keep serving God. I might also say this to you. God has a record. And he has a record of those people like justice. Those people who just simply give it their best. They don't want any recognition. They don't want anybody to pat them on the back. They just want to serve the Lord and do His will. And that's the kind of people that we need serving the Lord God. Now, the fourth one here who stayed, of course, you know who that is. That's Luke. Luke. Now, Luke is a very important man in the early church. Very important. By the way, Luke is a Gentile. Now, I don't know where you know this or not, but do you know what? Luke is probably the only Gentile that writes anything in the Word of God. <laughs> probably the only one. But here he is. He, he was a physician, by the way. And, a, and he was dearly beloved by the Apostle Paul. He was also loved by the Greeks and was held in high regard with people wherever he went. You know, the Apostle Paul, by the way, had the power to heal, yet he traveled with a physician. You know, now Luke John Paul a place called Troas. He traveled with him to Jerusalem, went on a voyage with him to Rome, and no doubt his personal uh, presence and professional skill uh, was a great encouragement to this man, Paul. Paul the missionary, Paul the man of God, Paul doing what God had called him to do, Winning people of the Lord Jesus Christ starting churches and all that, Luke sees in him something that he wants and he wants to be a part of that, you know. He was always there during difficult times. You know, when God brings strength and healing in miraculous ways, and Paul did that on some occasion, you know what? God also works through Medicine, did you know that? And doctors? <laughs> I just been through some of it. I know they they got the knowledge, they got the understanding. And they know what kind of medicine to give you, all these things. But let me tell you this, dear friends, they also need to know the Lord God Almighty. They need Jesus just like everybody else. And whenever you have an opportunity, you go to the doctor, one of the things uh Someone, uh, my dear sister back there said she had to go every day this week to the doctor. Take an opportunity to tell them, hey, you're a child of God. A heart doctor, he says, well, he says to me, you still preaching? I said, yeah. He said, well, praise God, keep it up. Now, that came about because when he was putting these stents in my heart, I had an opportunity to talk to him about Jesus. Tell him that I wasn't afraid what he's going to do because I knew what was going to, if I left this old world, you know, I knew where I was going. <laughs> and he told me he knew too. See, he's a Christian doctor. How wonderful, how grateful we are for people like that. You know. Now Luke remained with Paul to the very end. Second Timothy 2 11 again tells us that. Uh, and God used, now God used this man Luke in a marvelous way. First of all, to write the book, the Gospel of Luke. Don't you like the Gospel of Luke? <laughs> I do. Gospel of Luke. 
But he also wrote the book of Acts. And the book of Acts, you know, is simply a, a history of the early church. What happened? What took place? Where, where they went? What they did? All these people who were involved in it. I, I say this to you. Some of you are professional people, what have you. I think Luke is a growing example of a professional man who uses his skills and at the same time gives himself to God. You know. And by the way, I don't know where you know this. Now, yeah, you know this. There are a lot of people out there, professional people, who are Christians. Sometimes people uh, think, you know, because a person got education or something that, you know, they, they're not Christian. But they are. And we need to pray that the Lord God would send more, more people like that. Let me give you an example of what happened. When I was in San Antonio, Texas, I went to church on a Wednesday night. I got to church and there was a van, one well, of them old family vans, you know, not one of these super jobs like you got now. But this, this guy, there was baggage on top of it, two kids, you know, in the back seat, wasn't hardly room for anyone to turn around. And I said, uh, can I help you, sir? He said, yes. He said, uh, what kind of church is this? And, boy, I, you know, I'm, I told him, you know, who we were, what we were doing, all that. He said, well, I've just been transferred from an air base, and he, I don't know where that was at, an air base in Alabama. I've been transferred from Alabama to Texas here. And he said, this is what he said now. He said, I'm looking for a house in this area right here uh, where your church is located on. But he said, the first thing I want to do was to find a Bible-believing church. Even before he started looking for a home, he wanted to find a church where the Word of God was preached, where they, where they used the Word of God in Sunday school and preached it on Sunday and all those things. Oh, listen, I don't know. If you go, I don't know how many of you did that. You look around, you find a place, had a good church, and you bought your house close by. Or did you buy a house and then pray that there'd be a church somewhere close by that you'd go to? That's the way most people do it, isn't it? But this guy, now let me tell you something else about it. I, I thought, well, this is great. I said, you know, we, this is on Wednesday night, and I said, we're going to have a, we're going to have a Bible study and prayer here shortly. Would you mind coming? He said, well, we're not uh, too good a shape, you know, and he had shorts on and all that. And he said, what, do you think we'd come like this? I said, come on in. <laughs> and sure enough, he did. And for the next year or so there, he was one of the finest men that you ever run into. He was a major or something in the Army or Air Force. And I mean, he just dedicated himself unto God. That This was his life. He was a professional man, but yet at the same time, he was a godly man. And that's what we need in this world today. You know, Christians, I don't know what, you, you know, people who have different... Uh, of professions and different jobs and all that. But God can use all. Just like he does these people here, you see. Mark and Luke. All, all these who stayed with Paul, they didn't give up. They just simply gave it their very best. Like Luke, we need to be faithful, be faithful servants, you know, whatever, whoever you are. I, I might also say, on the other hand, I've had some people who, you know, 
Well, I probably shouldn't go there either. <laughs> but I will. Some people who, you know, thought that because they were lawyers or something, other doctors, or I'm sorry if it's some of the object, but they didn't want to get their hands dirty, didn't want to get involved, you know. Too, time is too valuable and all that. You see, this is it. Paul would say of these things, you know, these are the kind of men who stayed with me. They stayed with me through thick and through thin. When I was down, when I was in prison, whatever it was, these are the men that I could count on. And I would say unto you that in my ministry and in the many churches that I've pastored, I've had those kind of people who I could count on regardless. They were always there. You could depend on them. They were ready to help you do whatever they could do for the kingdom of God. They were men who stayed with it. I'd also say to you that in the, in the early church, there were women who were just as dedicated as the men. Now, they didn't go on the missionary journeys with Paul, but they stayed at home and they did tremendous things for the Lord God. And how thankful and grateful we are for those people who do not give up, who stay with it, who continue on regardless of what might come. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who commit themselves totally and completely unto you and who stay with it regardless of what happens. Yes, there will be tough times. There will be hard times. There will be times when you don't want to, times when you think things are not going well at this time. But those who stay are the ones that the Apostle Paul could say at the end of his book to the Colossians, or his epistle to the Colossians. You are the men who stayed with me through thick, through thin. You were always there. Thank you, Lord God, for men and women who do just that. We have many people today who are willing to just surrender their all to you, Lord, and how we thank you for them. And I pray tonight, again, if there's someone here who does not know you as your personal Savior, that tonight they would give a heart to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.